OK, so we've done blood pressure. Andy, what's the next B you've brought us for? The next B I'd like to discuss is breast cancer. OK. Very important. It's important because it can be serious and it's important because it's incredibly common. And in fact, about one in eight women during their life may experience breast cancer. So that's a staggering 12% of the female population. If you look into older age groups, it's more common. And in fact, 80% of those patients are over the age of 50. But that doesn't mean that young women don't get breast cancer because 20% of patients with breast cancer are under 50. And I expect you've seen a few of those in your general practice. Absolutely. We get all ranges of age and types of people coming in, in terms of small people, large people, people who are smokers. Every form of lady is potentially at risk of breast cancer. And every form of chap is at risk of breast cancer as well, because we still have breast tissue, but it is very small. The point with that is, if you have any doubt at all that you may have found a lump somewhere, not even necessarily the breast, talk to your doctor, please. You're right, James, it's important to talk to your doctor. I think, nonetheless, there is reluctance for some women to come forward, and they should not be embarrassed. This is such an important diagnosis. They should make an appointment to see you. If they want a female doctor, that can be arranged. But there's an old phrase that I learnt at medical school, which you probably learnt too, which is that no woman should have a lump in the breast. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I, I've got a story about this uh, a, a lady that I had, and she came into the GP surgery, and she was she was worried, she was anxious, and it was very difficult to work out why she'd actually come to see me that day. And I, you know, I did all the usual GP tricks, letting her talk and talking about her fears and things, and I, and I couldn't work out why she'd actually come to see me that day. Eventually, we did manage to find out that she was worried about a lump. And it turned out that she'd been worried about that lump for about a year. When we did have a look at that lump in her breast, she'd left it so long you could physically see the cancer coming through her skin. She had what's called a fungating tumour. That's a patient that will stay with me for the rest of my life. And it's one of those patients that galvanises me to promote breast cancer awareness and say, if you're in doubt, even if you're not certain, I would more than be ha I'd be more than happy to see 15, 20 people and reassure each and every one and say, no, I can't find anything, don't worry, you're safe. If that meant we don't miss that one person who's frightened and wasn't sure. And I think the general public are sometimes over-concerned about us, they're over-concerned that we're busy. And really, I would encourage all women out there to come forward if they think they've got a lump in the breast or they're just worried about their breasts in some way. Um, yes, it's a little bit embarrassing, but we're trained to deal with that. Survival rates in breast cancer, fortunately, are improving. In fact, there's been staggering improvement in the last 40 years or so. Nonetheless, it's still not a fantastic diagnosis. 90% of women, if they're detected early, will survive 20 years, which is good, but that means 10% won't. And if the cancer's already spread at diagnosis, and about 5% of women have a cancer that's already spread, then the outlook is, is more guarded for those patients. But just to repeat, the go-home message is, if you think you've got a problem, or you might have a problem, or you're just concerned for some reason, go and get it checked out. And like the blood pressure, there are things that people can do to reduce their risk. So, for example, being overweight, the same way as blood pressure, being overweight does increase your risk of breast cancer because it connects the same reason that women are more susceptible to breast cancer than chaps are. Breast cancer is driven by oestrogen. So the things that, we, that people can do that make more oestrogen in the body, such as being overweight, increase the exposure of oestrogen and increase the risk of breast cancer. Some of the things that are protective of breast cancer, having a baby, because having that baby um, changes your cycle and means you've got a reduction in exposure. Breastfeeding that said baby is also going to reduce your exposure to oestrogen. Now, 
I'm saying that they're things that are protective. I'm not necessarily promoting them as treatments, but we need to think about the whole patient. And lots of women will go through those things in the course of their life anyway. Let's talk a bit about what a woman can do to help herself. Uh, the simple thing a woman can do is breast self-examination. Now that's quite easy if you don't know how to do it. There's lots of videos out there. But I think a woman should be doing that every three months or so, just checking that there are no lumps. And if she's worried, some women unfortunately have lumpy breasts, so it's quite difficult to tell whether they've got a discrete lump. I'm actually going to come in there. I'm going to disagree slightly. I would suggest that a woman checks her breasts twice a month, so one, uh, different points of their cycle. The more that people check, bear in mind, you, how, how many times do you shower? Hopefully daily. Quickly check whilst you're in there. The more you know about your body, the more confident you're going to be that you've caught something straight away. There's no absolute right nor wrong with this. But again, I go back to the fact that I'm on the interventional side of things. I want more checks. Another thing is if she thinks she's got a problem, to report that problem. Now, the type of things a woman may feel are, first of all, a breast lump. But there are other things too. Um, there can be a change in the look of the nipple. There can be a discharge from the nipple. There can be a change in the shape of the breast. There can be a change in the skin of the breast. So those are five things that a woman may notice, and she should report any of those five things. And those things also apply to a chap. We, as chaps, we don't check our breasts because we don't have that amount of tissue. But we're all very aware of our nipples. If you see a change to your nipples, male or female, get it checked. Do not sit on this. Don't think, I'll, it'll probably be OK. Any change to the nipple, we need to know about it. Another thing a woman can do is ask her family whether there is a history of breast cancer. Because breast cancer is, to an extent, inherited. And there are some blood tests now that I expect you're used to ordering on women who have a family history of breast cancer. So that's another thing that you can do. Um, a final thing, and this is for older women, is to have a mammogram. Mammograms are uncomfortable. I've never had one, but I've got lots of friends who've had one, and it involves putting the breast within an x-ray machine. So they are uncomfortable, but they're very important. And in fact, the government recommends, and in fact invites women between the age of 50 and 70 to have a mammogram every three years. Now, a friend of mine who's in her late 50s admitted to me the other day that she rather naughtily doesn't open the envelope because she thinks it might say, come up for a mammogram, and because the last one hurt, she doesn't want to have a mammogram. I don't know how you feel about that, James. I think that's a shame because it's about, again, knowing her body and being safe. There are some people get worried about having a mammogram because of that radiation. The way I view that is I go out on my bike, A, because I enjoy it, and B, because I'm trying to keep fit, trying to reduce my chance of having high blood pressure. But by going out on the bike, there is a good chance I'll get knocked off my car and injured. It's already happened twice. Um, but I still do it anyway because overall I get more benefits from it. And that's the same thing with breast screening and breast cancer screening. Yes, it is going to be uncomfortable, and there is a theoretical risk from the radiation to it. But you are going to have more benefits by going for it than by not. So with that lady, I would want to do what I could to help her appreciate that she's going to get more benefits than that discomfort she had there. If, unfortunately, the lady does have a lump in her breast and she comes to see you, I'd just like to ask you what you would do next about that. How would you get that patient to a specialist at your local hospital? So, as you rightly know, and we've, I'm sure you get plenty of people who uh, you put on two-week waits as well, in my clinic, I have a very low threshold for doing what are called two-week wait. These are essentially emergency cancer clinic appointments. If I've got anybody who even slightly goes on my radar, they get this two-week wait um, referral. Basically, any lady who's coming in with a breast lump is going to be seen by me and is going to be seen then in the breast cancer clinic to make sure that we are safe. And I say to an awful lot of patients, 
this is probably nothing and it's probably just you know going to be a waste of an afternoon for you however i absolutely still want you to go along because it's about being safe rather than sorry and i actually thought that when i started training that i was doing a good thing by not referring as many patients as i was and i was trying to save money I've actually been told off with that and told I need to refer more patients and we need to get more patients with normal findings. I found that strange initially. You definitely shouldn't hold back for referring patients. In fact, uh, before uh, this session, I had a chat to a breast specialist, a breast surgeon in my hospital, and I said, if you're going to give the general public a single go-home message, what would it be? He said, don't ignore a lump in the breast get a two-week wait referral to see me. I don't mind. He said, I don't mind. His clinics are very busy. In fact, they see 90 patients twice a week. So for that number of patients, you're going to need five or more specialists there to see women to examine the breasts. But they are there and they are waiting to see you. So that's his message to you all. If you come in with a breast lump, the chances of you not being sent to the hospital to get extra tests are very, very low. There are a few patients who I'm able to reassure, but that's normally, we'll do a couple of things and recheck, and then if those changes haven't um, gone away, you're going to be seen again. We take this very, very seriously. And as with everything, if you're not sure, I'm not sure, that's not good enough. We have to get that extra data to make sure everyone is safe. And I make no apologies for sending people. Finally, I'll tell you my breast story, and this is about my 92-year-old mother. About 10 years ago, I was on sabbatical in Boston with my family. And this was something I was really looking forward to. It had taken me two years to organise. We had a nice house. The work was interesting and one week into the sabbatical my mother rang me and said she had a lump in her breast mm -hmm. so I was very distressed she told me not to worry and it's probably not serious dear and I said mum please go to your GP and she did uh, she was referred through the two-week system saw a surgeon uh, who operated about four weeks later and I came home from my sabbatical in Boston to look after her. Um, that was ten years ago, now ten years later she's fit, she's free of breast cancer and cured. So that's the go-home message, you can cure breast cancer. Well, I think that wraps up uh, breast uh, and breast cancer there. Um, a subject that I have an, a great deal of passion for. As Andy has rightly said, one in eight people will be touched by this disease in their uh, lifetime, in the case of women. Slightly less in men, but it still affects both parties, so take care. Right, with um, the breast cancer section out of the way, join us for the next video um, and we'll look at BMI. So, if this has been useful for you, please consider subscribing and We'll see you in the next video. Cheerio.